Hello, I'm Michelle Obrecht, an Alexander Technique certified teacher and the Alexander Technique class instructor at the School of Music, Theater, and Dance. And I'm going to share with you a few details about what the Alexander Technique is and demonstrate how it can be helpful to you as a performing artist. Many students I encounter say they've heard of the Alexander Technique and it's been recommended to them, but they really don't have a clear concept of what it is. I'm going to explain and demonstrate some of the basic principles. The Alexander Technique was developed by F.M. Alexander, who was an Australian actor at the end of the 19th century. As he was reciting Shakespeare, he would habitually lose his voice. Through patient self-observation with the use of mirrors over the course of 10 years, he determined that the way he was holding himself and using his body was responsible for the loss of his voice. From there, he developed principles about how habit can interfere with the free and easy use of not only the voice, but the whole body. I'd like to talk about two fundamental components taught in Alexander classes and lessons. First is structural organization of the body. Most people lack a basic understanding of how the body is balanced. The second component taught in classes is the interplay between your thoughts and the balance, organization, and function of the body. This is what makes Alexander work distinct and really useful. Most people think that if they want to achieve their goals, they have to try harder and harder, and if they don't, they'll fall behind or fail. This mentality leads to a lot of tension in the body and also anxiety in one's inner dialogue. Thoughts influence muscles, and muscles influence thoughts. I'll use this infant toy to demonstrate, which is a tensegrity model based on the work of Buckminster Fuller. The body is actually designed this way, with components in complete balance. Too much contraction can result in a body that's contracted inward like this, or contracted outward like this. In both cases, the body is rigid and loses flexibility. What we want is a body that's dynamic and springy and can move in multiple directions without interference. This is a body that can breathe freely and happily. The key to escaping from rigidity and tension is awareness, a cornerstone of Alexander work. How is my thinking affecting the way in which I'm using my body? How informed am I as to how my body works Am I free enough to make moment-to-moment -moment informed choices that are fresh and new? Or am I stuck in the same old approach, the same discomfort, the same dissatisfaction? Alexander work can offer the performer ease, poise, access to breath, control, freedom, and a pathway to a deeper place within oneself, the key to enlightened artistry, and yes, also the lack of pain, which can be a horrible burden for so many performing artists. This, this approach can often make the difference between a tense and forced performance and one that is organic, communicative, and uplifting. I'd like you to meet Jonathan Konjurski, who's going to help me demonstrate how an Alexander session works. Jonathan took the Introduction to Alexander Technique class and a series of private lessons as well. So Jonathan, would you like to say a few things about yourself? Of course, Michelle. Hi, I'm Jonathan. I graduated from the School of Music, Theater, and Dance with a degree in oboe performance. Right now, I am enrolled in a teacher's training course to become a certified teacher of the Alexander Technique. I had become so discouraged by the amount of tension that had crept into my playing over the years. The harder I tried, the more stuck I felt. With Alexander work, I was given the precious opportunity of inner exploration, which allowed me to create conscious change in myself and my music. I have found greater freedom in all aspects of my life, and I decided to train to teach others what I have learned. Wonderful. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay, so we'll begin our demonstration. So, Jonathan, come here in front of the chair and just go ahead and have a seat. So what I'd like you to do is talk a little bit about how you habitually sat and approached your instrument or even approached your everyday life and comment a little bit uh, about that for us. 
Sure. So, like most people out in the world, I was a leg crosser. I habitually <laughs> crossed the right over the left. And, you know, oboe playing wasn't super painful, but if I played for about an hour and a half, whenever I would release the instrument, I'd feel a snap in my forearm, mm -hmm. like a rubber band was going off. And, you know, reed making is a huge part about, you know, playing the oboe, playing a double reed instrument. So we have to make those reeds ourselves. So I would get really close to the reed. My shoulders were hiked up like this. My chest was totally bent over because I was trying to see every little detail. Same thing if I was texting, you know, I would get really close to the phone, I'd lose myself or I'd be reading a book. I'm an introvert, so I'd typically be scrunched over like this. As many people are. Right. So let's see what happens now when you grab your instrument and how did this habitual way of sitting influence the way you played? Well, the habit was probably really unconscious. Like I brought in what I did in my daily life to my music making. So I'm sure as you know, most of my teachers had pointed out, my shoulders were raised up when I played. My chest was hunched. I would take really shallow upper breaths with my chest um, to try and blow more air through the instrument. But the oboe is a high pressure instrument as it is. And all of the increased tension that I'm now aware of in my body was really not helping with the experience. It was very tense and uncomfortable. Okay, good. So go ahead and put your instrument down and I'm just gonna have you come to standing. So, as an Alexander Technique teacher, the one thing I notice right away is that that chair is way too short for Jonathan. He's tall and he has long legs. So I'm gonna move the chair, and I'm gonna get instead this higher stool. And that in and of itself can make quite a difference. But now we're gonna to try to apply some Alexander principles before Jonathan sits down. It's very important to be aware of what's going on in your body before you plunk yourself down to sing or play. So Jonathan, what I'd like you to do is just tune in with me and let's tune into our breathing. Nothing forced, everything easy. And be aware of your feet now and let your feet experience the ground so that it fully supports you let the support come up from the ground and into your legs and into your pelvis so that you have that grounded sense of not having to hold on to yourself 360 degree rib cage that you're not holding on to and just go ahead and let your neck go. Most people have a tendency to grab onto their heads with their neck muscles, but we're gonna let the, those neck muscles just stream down so that the head can be slightly poised off the top of the neck, which is much higher than most people think. Okay, so now that you're nicely over your feet, I'm gonna guide Jonathan into the chair or onto the stool. So go ahead and release in the ankles, knees, and hips so that you get yourself right down onto the stool. Okay. So what are you noticing now about the higher stool and your general sense of yourself? Well, now that I have a little higher seat, it actually feels much more comfortable. I can find where my sits bones are on the chair. My feet can be comfortably flat on the floor and I can breathe. It's nice. actually really <laughs> awesome. I feel really centered in myself. I feel very poised in the moment and in control of what I'm about to do. Beautiful. So now let's just make sure that you're nice and open, still breathing and not, uh, and not get triggered by the fact that I'm gonna start to ask you to pick up your instrument. So stay with yourself and don't worry about the instrument coming over to you. So okay. go ahead and get the instrument. And just hold on to it. And what are you noticing? Well, the big difference, what I'm aware of now, my shoulders feel rested 
dare I say, my elbows feel a little bit weighted down to the ground, but not in a constricted way. The oboe feels very supported by my whole self. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And I can still breathe with my back mm -hmm. ribs. So let's just make sure that your wrists and your elbows are free. That's it, you wanna make sure you're not stiffening, still breathing, that your neck is not grabbing, that you have a nice general uplift up and over the top of your head, and that you're using your feet as an additional source of support. Mm -hmm. All right, so if you're ready, without gearing up, without over-preparing, let out a little breath first so that you don't gear up with the inhale, and then why don't you play us a little something? Beautiful. You can go ahead and put your instrument down. All right. So now making sure that you're nice and free, and I'm gonna make sure that your body is going with the flow. No holding, I could take you anywhere. And this represents a, a degree of creative choice. If you're not rigid, if you're not gripped, you can make those split second decisions you can have access to a sort of a, a greater and bigger sense of yourself, the room you're in, the other people that you're playing with. Your hearing will be more fine-tuned. Can I say a little bit about that, Michelle? You bet. So one big thing I've noticed in ensemble playing now, before my habitual way of coming to the instrument, blowing really hard, being really tense, getting in the zone to try and get it right, um, now that that's gone, now that I'm more open, now that I'm aware of the entire room and the sounds of the room, I can clearly pick out the first flute, the second clarinet, the first bassoon. I can hear what I'm doing. I can clearly hear what they're playing. I can tune with them. I finally feel like I'm a part of the group. And that any sort of music making that comes out of the oboe now, it comes from a more inner true place. I'm not trying hard, I'm just expressing the music that's there. That's what we want. That's exactly what we want. Well put. Okay, so with that nice freedom, here we go. Back to standing. And that concludes our demonstration. Very short, but to the point of an Alexander Technique lesson. Thank you for listening to this very brief explanation of how Alexander work can help you. To find out more about Alexander Technique, you can go to alexandertechnique.com for an informative series of articles. Alexander Group classes are offered through the School of Music, Theater, and Dance under the Wellness Subject Code, and private lessons are also available for an out-of-pocket fee. I hope you take the time from your busy schedules to seek out this wonderfully efficient way to achieve your goals.